Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to our final segment or installment here in our biodiversity series, uh, looking at the last group of chordates that we're going to study here, the mammals. Now, uh, what makes a mammal a mammal? Okay, well, mammals have fur or hair, uh, have uh, placentas uh, in which there's a connection um, between the maternal blood supply and uh, the fetal blood supply, and uh, live birth of young with the exception of uh, certain groups, uh, and mammary lambs for the production of milk for young, uh, increased social behavior, uh, middle ear bones, all sorts of uh, uh, interesting features unique to mammals. Now in terms of how we got uh, some of these structures in our, our middle ear, um, it appears as though uh, over time uh, some of our uh, more reptile-like chordate ancestors, um, or even those that uh, predated uh, reptiles, I'm sorry, um, experienced changes in uh, bone structure in the skull and uh, now some of these bones are uh, modified to sense vibration and transmit that uh, to uh, our inner ears. Uh, now mammals uh, come in three groups, um, two of which are fairly uh, restricted. Uh, monotremes, there are only a, a few species of monotremes, uh, one of which, uh, to which, uh, uh, one of which, uh, to which Parrotid platypus belongs. Um, our supials, uh, again restricted to uh, Australia, but then most are eutherians, or, or true placental mammals, and this is the group that we find ourselves in. Now, uh, monotremes are sort of unique because they are egg layers, so there you see the tiny little egg of uh, a monotreme. Uh, marsupials have embryos that develop in a pouch external to the, uh, to the body, so there you see uh, a little uh, possum uh, as it develops nicer that it's inside for us. Okay, uh, now marsupials um, in Australia have uh, many traits similar to those uh, seen in eutherian mammals in other parts of the world, and this is a great example of uh, convergent evolution and the analogous structures uh, that can uh, result. Uh, now all sorts of orders of uh, mammals that we see here you know, there's a lot of great things there. We're going to focus on the primates. Now, primates have some interesting characteristics. Primates have forward-facing eyes, as you can see there in our Pussimian friends. Uh, so that gives us overlapping fields of vision, uh, which helps with uh, three-dimensional vision. Great if you're swinging from tree to tree. Primates have ball and socket joints uh, in our uh, limbs, so that gives greater flexibility in climbing. Uh, our eyes see uh, wavelengths of light uh, or RC color, so that are a broader uh, spectrum uh, of light, so that um, indicates that we are active, or uh, primates are predomin predominantly active uh, during the day, uh, increased social behavior, greater intelligence, um, opposable thumb, certainly great for grasping, and uh, uh, power grip. Uh, let's see, so um, we have all sorts of groups of primates here. Um, the big thing we see is that, okay, early on we have these primate ancestors, um, then we see some divisions. Uh, one market division is Old World and New World monkeys. Uh, New World monkeys uh, found their way into Central and South America and uh, Southern uh, portions of North America um, after Pangaea split up Old World monkeys uh, retained on the African continent. Now, uh, the Old World monkeys also gave rise to the great apes, uh, to which uh, we find ourselves uh, a member here, uh, all decked out in a, a blazer and jeans. All right, so um, within uh, the uh, ape group, uh, we find uh, some of our closest relatives. Uh, really just fascinating uh, to observe and sort of see the similarities that exist between some of our closest ancestors and us. As a matter of fact, I think my son has uh, given that exact facial expression as uh, he sat in time out before. Uh, let's see. Now, after we split uh, with our uh, other primate ancestors, um, members of the genus Homo have uh, also experienced change over time. And this is really cool to see these change. We have early upright organisms uh, that have um, undergone uh, sort of a directional increase in the uh, endocranial capacity or, or size of the skull. Uh, additionally, uh, if you look at the organisms from the, from the profile here, you see a continued flattening uh, of the face by the time you get up to 
uh, Homo sapiens, our faces are completely black. Uh, you see other uh, structural changes uh, that occur as well, but there's a steady progression of um, change seen in uh, members of the genus Homo uh, until we get to us. Now some of the earlier members uh, of uh, our uh, lineage, or a particular branch of this lineage, uh, are Artipithecus ramidus and the Australopithecines. Now Australopithecus is pretty interesting uh, because uh, there's a, a particularly famous uh, skeleton. Here's Lucy. This is a fairly complete skeleton of a, a member of this uh, group. They were completely upright, um, had some tool use, but only stood about three, three and a half feet tall. And uh, Lucy is the first member of this particular group to have been found. Um, also sort of interesting, uh, these Laetoli footprints. Uh, this is in volcanic ash that uh, had uh, been dumped millions of years ago after a volcanic eruption. And here they see clear evidence of bipedal ancestors. So here these organisms walked on two feet. And what's sweet is you see these points here where there are small feet next to it. So there's a parent and child, and then you'd have occasion uh, in the footprints where those small footprints disappeared and then they'd reappear. So the parent would apparently be uh, picking up its child and uh, returning the child to the ground to walk further. So uh, amazing to see these differences uh, in species, but still maintain this sort of sense of connection uh, between us and our closest relatives. Now, uh, the first modern humans evolved about 200,000 years ago in East Central Africa. We can get a sense of that through uh, mutations uh, that have occurred in mitochondrial DNA. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Y chromosome uh, DNA that has changed over time so we can track that. So you can back track our patrilineage uh, and our matrilineage and they all point back to uh, life evolving in um, portions of Africa. Uh, about 200,000 years ago. So um, we had other members of our genus um, that uh, coexisted uh, on Earth, um, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, uh, and uh, a couple others that uh, were sort of uh, marginal. Uh, but uh, the other members of our, uh, our genus have uh, died out. So we're the only uh, member of our species uh, that's rem that remains. And uh, certainly the cultural changes that have occurred uh, and humans uh, over the past hundred years, or 200,000 years have been uh, absolutely astounding. But uh, one of the early features of um, human existence uh, is symbolic life, uh, the creation of language and uh, the uh, self-expression uh, through art. Uh, so here you have uh, little flutes uh, that were created. So the little notches cut out there to make music uh, and then obviously have some sort of uh, symbolic meaning that we see here. So, you know, within the cave in which uh, some early humans lived, there's certainly all sorts of uh, record of uh, the art that they produced, uh, but also uh, these uh, musical instruments uh, that uh, would, I'm sure, sound pretty spectacular uh, in caves. So, you know, we progress um, and move on. Well, there we have it. Uh, the chordates, our last uh, branch in this uh, tree of life that we're studying. Uh, please make sure that uh, you have some of the basic ideas in mind. You know, know where the branches are, and know what the groups are, know a few features of the groups, get examples for organisms in the groups, and uh, I think you're required to have at least uh, one image. So it'll be information packed, uh, but uh, again, we're, we're looking for a wide breadth of knowledge here. I hope everyone is uh, doing well, and take care. Uh, look forward to seeing you in class.